With new cameras being announced and Canon's release of the R5 and the R6 last year, is the Canon EOS R still worth it in 2021? Hey everyone, today I'm going to be going over some of the things I don't like about the Canon EOS R and also go over some of the things I love. Recently I've gotten a lot of messages wondering if I still like the R and if I would still recommend it. The question of whether you should get it or not really boils down to what you're going to be using it for and if it will function the way you need it to. So without wasting any more of your time, let's get right into it. Starting with the things I don't like about the Canon EOS R. Only one SD card slot. This is not a deal breaker for most people but if you're someone who has been used to shooting with two, I can definitely see an issue with it. As a photographer recently tapping into the wedding industry, something I wish I had was the ability to write on two different cards as a backup. Something about one card just doesn't sit well with me. The fact that you could be coming home from a shoot and maybe it gets damaged or there's something wrong internally would just be a disaster. I know wedding photographers love having the ability to write to both cards, so it's unfortunate that the R doesn't have that. The 1.7x crop when shooting in 4K is absolutely ridiculous. This has to be one of my biggest dislikes about this camera. What you're watching right now is 1080 upscaled to 4K. I shoot in 1080 because every time I switch it into 4K, I realize how useless it is. It literally makes it impossible for me to shoot in 4K unless I want my head taking up the entire screen. This isn't the best if you're creating content for YouTube or other platforms. However, if you throw in a 16mm, that 1.7x crop isn't so bad, only making it a 27mm focal length. For your own reference, you're watching me at a 35mm focal length, about only two feet away from the camera. Because we're on the top of the 4K video, I guess I'll mention that the EOS R can't shoot 4K at a frame rate any higher than 30 frames per second. This is another problem for all you videographers out there who shoot in 4K. For all you beginners out there, if you plan on recording slow motion, you will need higher than 30 frames per second. So you'll find yourself shooting in 1080p way more than you think. While we're at it, if you plan on getting that buttery smooth 120 frames per second slow motion, you can do it, but only at 720p, which is horrible considering we're in 2021 and let's face it, who enjoys watching videos at 720p? Although the R has great button customization, the touch bar that was like the coolest thing is actually not that cool. And to be completely honest, I never use it. There are only so many controls you can assign to it and it's actually more of a pain to use it than not. When I first got the R, I had the white balance assigned to it and when I realized how easy it was to accidentally change my settings, I unassigned it. You might find a button configuration that works for you, but I was never able to. Moving on to stabilization, the USR doesn't have in-body image stabilization, also known as IBIS. So if you're using a lens that doesn't have image stabilization, there's no IS switch, and you have no image stabilization whatsoever. When comparing this to the Sony a7 III, which is supposed to be the R's competitor, the a7 III does have IBIS, and it also has two SD card slots to touch on the point mentioned earlier. However, IBIS is not a deal breaker considering photographers have been using cameras without IBIS for decades and still capturing great photos. This isn't a huge deal to me, generally I'm always shooting above 1 and 150 and if I'm shooting any long exposures or night photos, I'm definitely setting up my tripod. With that being said, those are really the only problems I have with the R. So let's move on to some of the things I love about this camera. The EOS R has a full frame 30 megapixel sensor. With more megapixels comes bigger file sizes. Photos will have a maximum resolution of 6720 by 4480 pixels, and this is why I love it. I'm always cropping in on photos, and doing this with photos captured by the R makes it so much easier, giving me the ability to crop in quite a bit without losing any quality. Now let's say you're a fashion photographer and your photos are always getting on the cover of magazines or on huge billboards. Or let's say you're a landscape photographer and you want to sell big prints of your photos. Having photos with a higher resolution will ensure you're getting the best quality on those big displays. The eye and face detection. The USR does such a good job with its eye and face detection when focusing. I've heard many people complain about shooting in manual focus because their camera isn't accurate with the autofocus. I can tell you with the R, I never run into this problem. I've never ran into any problems with it trying to focus even in lower light situations and I rely heavily on the autofocus. Ask anyone with the R and I guarantee you they will tell you that the eye detection is amazing. The only time I ever switch into manual focus is if I'm shooting street photography or product photography solely because I want to use the focus peaking which leads you to my next point. If you don't know what focus peaking is, it's basically a feature that highlights everything that's in focus within the shot. This feature is so useful and the focus peaking on the R does such a good job at highlighting those in focus areas. You can also change the color and brightness of the peaking. One of my favorite things about this camera is the shutter curtain, a feature you don't get in a lot of cameras. The point of the shutter curtain is to protect the sensor when changing lenses or any time you have the shutter exposed. 
As soon as you shut off the camera and detach the lens, an electronic curtain is put in place to protect the sensor. I used to worry about getting dust on the sensor when changing all the lenses, but not anymore. The R has excellent dynamic range and the C-Log is easy to color grade. This also goes for the RAW files. I love the amount of room I have when editing and the colors that come from this camera are just amazing. This video was edited using a slight color grade, mostly just contrast to bring back some color. Now this is not uncommon and you'll find it in almost every camera nowadays, but I'm glad the R has it, a flip out screen. As someone who creates videos daily for TikTok, Reels, and YouTube, I'm using this constantly. I also never thought I would need it for doing photo shoots, but recently, I've been using it a lot lately, especially when getting those low and high angle shots. There's so much I love about this camera, like the grip and feel, it's lightweight, long lasting batteries, and new technology, but if I listed them all, we would be here forever. As I said before, it really boils down to what you're gonna be using it for. Would I recommend the USR to a photographer? 100%. To this day, I still recommend it just because of all the great features, 30 megapixels, unbeatable eye and face detection, focus peaking, long lasting batteries, the list goes on. So I would definitely recommend it. For a videographer whose main purpose is shooting video and not photos, I would probably not recommend this camera. If you can tell, the things that I hated the most were all linked to video. Not being able to film at any higher than 30 frames per second in 4K and having to deal with that insane 4K crop factor makes this camera not the best for videographers. However, working with 1080p footage like I do daily, this camera is great. It has a ton of dynamic range and the C-Log is awesome for color grading. I know I'll be keeping my USR for at least a couple more years. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, smash that like button, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell to be notified when I post a new video. And yes, even just a like helps me with the algorithm. Peace.